Hello and welcome. My name's Matt Lagore, and I am usually the host of the Matt Lagore Show, but today, on behalf of NORCAM and uh, the SBA, which stands for the Small Business Administration, I'm going to be hosting a show talking about small business and how you can be better prepared, uh, better supported, uh, you name it. And I have today as our guest, Mr. Bob Nelson. Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you, Matt. Good All to right. be here. And as I said, you know, this is uh, something I'm doing for NORCAM and for the Small Business Associ uh, Administration. I myself am a small business, so when they told me about it, I was very intrigued by it. So why don't you give us a quick description of what the SBA is? Sure. So the SBA, the Small Business Administration, we're an agency of the federal government. Uh, the whole purpose of the SBA is to foster, preserve, promote the interests of small business, to try to strengthen the economy, create jobs. Uh, we're probably most well known for helping small businesses to get access to capital, but we do a lot more than that. Okay. So it's obvious the capital part, the money part, everybody knows you start a business, you need some money. Elaborate just a little bit more on the other stuff that you do. Sure. So uh, the capital is the fuel that businesses need to yeah. start to grow, if, if, but they need the knowledge and the skills in order to be successful. Right. You know, we all hear about the failure rate of businesses uh, from starting to uh, success and, and can they last three years, five years. They, they need that knowledge and skills in order to be successful. So we do a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one business advisory, a lot of workshops. We have uh, a partner network that helps us to do that free business counseling and mentorship. So mm -hmm. SCORE is one of the organizations. We also have small business development centers. We have women's centers and we also have a veterans business outreach center that helps with that uh, technical assistance. In addition to uh, TA, we also get heavily involved with government contracting. Uh, mm -hmm. The federal government uh, is the largest purchaser of goods and services in the world and 23% uh, of those buys are gold to go to small businesses here in the United States. So. Uh, we do a lot of work with small businesses so that they can be successful and to get into selling to the federal government as a way to try to increase revenues and it can be very successful if you're sure. the right business. Yeah, absolutely. So just quickly, just say how do we how does someone get in touch with the SBA? The, the, the easiest way and what everyone should do is to sign up for our uh, e-updates. And mm -hmm. so if they go onto the SBA website, which is sba.gov, mm -hmm. that's the national website. But if you go sba.gov MA, mm -hmm. that will get you into the Massachusetts homepage. Okay. Uh, it, and like uh, I said, we're a national uh, agency, mm -hmm. so federal government. Uh, so if you want to get into New Hampshire information, it's slash NH, and you'll All right. get into the New Hampshire uh, homepage page. But uh, you'll get a pop-up uh, that says, do you want to sign up for e-updates? Everyone should sign up for those because yeah, we do yeah. a lot of workshop, a, a lot of events. There are lots of opportunities that we broadcast out to our network so mm -hmm. that they can take advantage of the opportunities. Okay. So a small businessman like myself, um, now I, I, I've, I've been in business for about 20 years. Uh, I want to grow my business but I'm not sure how to do it. Like, like I, I, I need uh, more trucks. I need more training. Maybe I'm not very good at the, uh, the, the growth part of it, you know? Right. Do I come to you and you, help, you, you could train me in some, some of those aspects? Absolutely. So we help uh, businesses in all stages of their growth. So if someone's just uh, thinking of an idea and they want to explore whether uh, the concept makes any sense and, uh, you know, they can meet with our mentors, meet with the uh, business advisors, and they'll help to flesh out the idea. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, the suggestion is going to be, uh, think of another idea. Uh, <laughs> 
because, <laughs> and that's valuable because yeah. we don't want businesses to fail. Uh, yeah. We want them to have a good chance of uh, success. And, uh, but for businesses that want to grow, uh, certainly we can uh, talk to them about growth strategies, uh, marketing, uh, you name it. Uh, we have uh, business advisors and mentors that can uh, help with those specific questions. Now, what about if you not necessarily want to grow, but you want to be more efficient? Yeah. So when you think of the, the SCORE organization, uh, so in Boston alone, uh, we have over uh, 80 mentors, and mm -hmm. they're from all different facets of industry. Uh, we also have a really strong chapter up here in the northeastern part of the state. We have six SCORE chapters across Massachusetts. And again, we, it's a national network. And so uh, it, we try to connect people with the specific industry that the business is coming to us with. And, and mm -hmm. so uh, for yourself, we, you know, we try to find someone who has that uh, background, uh, you know, with uh, you know fixing cars and or uh, the auto industry, so mm -hmm. that they can try to uh, you know provide solid advice and and you know people have made mistakes, they can uh, hopefully help you to sure. prevent those mistakes. Yeah. And, yeah. and so if we can't find someone locally, we can tap out into the national network in order to try to connect you with the right resources. Okay. And now, what's your what's your role with the uh, SBA? So I run the SBA for the state of Massachusetts. I've been with the SBA for close to 20 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been the state director now for 10. Uh, love working for the SBA. It, it's extremely rewarding. I, I get to see almost daily the impacts of the SBA programs when I drive around the state, uh, you know, recognizing the names of businesses that got SBA loans or got technical assistance. And uh, it, it's really rewarding. And, uh, you know, when I look at uh, businesses that we've helped to survive or to grow and, and uh, you know, and to see the number of jobs that they've created since the last time that I've uh, visited with them, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it shows that our programs are working. Yeah, yeah. Now, I asked you a question because when I heard SBA, you know, um, Small Business Administration, I immediately thought of like a, a mom and pop. Uh, but you said it can be, it can be for that. But you said that a small business can be a lot bigger too. Sure. So uh, right now, 98% of the businesses in Massachusetts would be considered small by SBA size standard. Yeah. So you can be pretty big and still uh, be eligible for SBA financial assistance. Uh, when you get into government contracting, there's different size standards depending on the industry. Usually you look at a manufacturer, if they have 500 employees or less, they'd be eligible. Uh, when we look at retail, you know, there are uh, gross revenues, but uh, on the loan side, we're operating under a alternative size standard. If the business has a $15 million net worth or $5 million of net income or less, mm -hmm. then they'd be eligible for an SBA. SBA loan. Mm -hmm. and it, it really is amazing when I look at uh, how wide uh, we reach the small business community in, in Massachusetts. So uh, last year in fiscal year 2017, uh, the smallest loan uh, that was done with the SBA guarantee was $1,000. Really? All, all the way up to $5 million. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. So it's, it's this far. And, and you name the type of industry and business uh, most likely there's uh, someone getting SBA assistance across the Commonwealth. Sure, sure. Well, that's very important because there's a lot of businesses that get to a size where they they're, would be considered large by everyday standards. Right. And, you know, it would be hard. It, you think that, well, I, I have to do it on my own now. But to know that up to $5 million in sales, right? Is that what you said? So, well, our loans go up to $5 million. Yeah. That's the maximum. But mm -hmm. $5 million uh, uh, of net income. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's so a lot of money. It, it's, it's a lot of money, a and you can still be small. But, you know, so, you know, some things, if you want to get into government contracting and, and selling to the government, uh, you, you really have to have been in business for at least two years. Uh, you have to uh, be able to demonstrate to the government that you uh, uh, you can deliver on the contract. Sure, and, yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, you know, so on the government sales, you know, uh, we work with small businesses, but they tend to be, you know, more established businesses. Mm -hmm. So t tell me this. Do you have uh, uh, any success stories? Uh, that you'd like to share with us from from uh, Massachusetts or in this area? You, you know, there's, uh, it's a real difficult question because, yeah. you know, uh, last year in Massachusetts, we did about 2,800 loans for, you know, close to $750 million. And mm -hmm. that's just in Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, so I get to visit a lot of different businesses. Uh, you know, one of the businesses up this way, uh, you know, Sal's Pizza. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, Sal Lapoli, you know, he's one of our entrepreneurial success winners, and yeah. uh, you know, we had him at our small business awards event this uh, this past May. He delivered a 
really phenomenal uh, inspirational story as far as uh, entrepreneurial success. And, but, you know, he's, he's one that jumps out, but, but there are smaller businesses. You know, I was recently in, in Haverhill uh, visiting with Battleground Coffee, and that's a, uh, you know, a husband and wife team uh, yeah. doing some amazing things. They, it was a startup business. Uh, got an SBA loan in order to get that uh, business launched uh, with uh, Beverly Bank, and now I, I believe that they're looking to open up a second location. Uh, but uh, you know, I was uh, for Small Business Saturday. I was out in the western part part of the state in Charlton, uh, mm -hmm. visiting Treehouse Brewery, mm -hmm. and you know, craft brews. It, it really has taken off, and it, it's exploding. And, and you look at Treehouse Brewery. You know, uh, people are lining up for an hour and a half. Uh, in order to, to buy beer mm. uh, from Treehouse Brewery and, and just doing amazing things. But uh, they were able to get help with the SBA 504 program and our uh, 7A program. Yeah. See, that's like very inspirational to know that, that, that your government, like when I say your government, I mean my government, your government, is out there trying to help and promote business. It's not about, you know, there's so much negativity. One of the things I talk about on my show is there's so much negativity and it, it causes more negativity. And you don't realize like how much the federal government has its hand up to help you too. It's not just April 15th, give me your money. It's like, look, we have these programs to, to support you. Absolutely. So I'm a career employee, been with the SBA for a long time. And, uh, you know, that's what we're about is trying to help businesses uh, you know, so that they can start and grow and create jobs. And, and uh, with the SBA program last year, uh, there were over 18,000 jobs uh, created or retained with our loan programs alone. So this is in small That's business? In, in small business with SBA loan programs just in Massachusetts, over 18,000 18, jobs. 18,000, wow. And, yeah. and what I like to talk about is you, you think of uh, the families, right? Yeah. right? So that's support, you know, often supporting a family. Yeah. And then the multiplier effect of uh, what uh, those jobs and, and their paychecks are going mm -hmm. uh, to buy in the community. And, uh, it, you know, it, we play a very important role to... Uh, help strengthen the economy and you know over half of all Americans either own or, or, or work for a small uh, business and you know and small businesses have been the job creators. 50% huh? Yeah, absolutely. 50%. Yeah. Now um, small bit, uh, no, not that, um, small business Saturday. Yeah. All right so now what kind of promotion do you do anything for that because I saw I saw her in the header there it said that there was a there was a caption on that, right? And so, uh, Small Business Saturday, uh, it's been around for uh, several years now. But it's it's a way to just try to elevate the importance of small business and and trying to make people think, you know, uh, you know, shop small, dine small. So, I, I can tell you, all the SBA offices across the country did events or walking tours, and uh, you know, just to try to elevate the importance of small business. And and that's yeah. why we went out to uh, uh, Treehouse Brewery in, in Charlton, Mass. Uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, for Thanksgiving, you know, they're they're looking for for beer. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, and, but uh, it was a great visit, and we had uh, a, a number of people show up and uh, got some good press from. You're making me want to go out yeah. there. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah. You know, you know what um, I think is important about small business, uh, especially when it comes to local, is you know, as you have you have a family and you get little older like I am. I'm 51 years old. My kids are in school, but we want to go out somewhere, but we don't necessarily want to go to a big chain restaurant. We want to try something new, something different, you know, and to have things local, it, it makes you, it gives you pride in your community. You say, hey, you know, you should try this restaurant over here. It's fantastic. You know, we're very proud of it here in North Reading. Uh, I think that's something that is kind of, um, not lost, but it's something that people don't realize is very important to a community. It is. And when you think of the number of employees that work for food establishments in Massachusetts alone, it's a very important uh, segment of the economy. Uh, and I can tell you that most restaurants and, and food service businesses, the, often the only way that they're able to get capital is with an SBA back loan. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Just because of the uh, perception of a high failure rate. And, you know, so banks often will not lend uh, to restaurants sure. and, and food service businesses unless there's an SBA guarantee. So. Uh, it's really important for people to know that SBA, we don't lend the money directly. Uh, what we do is we provide a guarantee uh, yeah. to the lender, the credit mm -hmm. union, the bank, in order to get them uh, to say yes and to make the loan happen. So, so you're saying to the bank, 
like if something happens with this business, we're going to secure your loan. We're going to make sure you get paid. Right. Is that so, right? So SBA's guarantee, it runs to the bank. It yeah. doesn't run to the small business. So the, ah, okay, the, the yeah. small business always owes 100% of the debt. Yep. But, but, you know, say you're looking at a $100,000 loan, uh, the bank can get an 85% guarantee from us. So mm -hmm. their exposure is really just 15,000 yeah. bucks. And so we really reduce the risk on the part of the bank so that they'll lend to these early stage businesses, to these businesses uh, that have a, a reasonable chance of uh, likelihood of repayment and, and success. Uh, you know, SBA, we're not a lender of last resort. It, it's really a, a strong portfolio. But often these businesses, they're only able to get uh, the money uh, with the SBA backing. Mm -hmm. So if I came to you and I said, Bob, I've got a, I've got a great idea. I want to, I want to start a restaurant. Um, I need some backing. Now you could go one of two ways with me. You could look at it and go, you know what? I like what you got going on here. Here's some programs we want you to to do first. Right. Get some education, and then we're going to help you get this done. Or you might even go to me, and go, Matt. You know what? I don't think this is the right right move for you. Correct. Right. So often, you know, we, we have a lot of people who think that they could be a good restaurant owner because they love to cook. And, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. You know, that's the... Uh, Maybe they love to go out to eat. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they might just like to eat. And, but, you know, there's a lot that goes into uh, running yeah. a successful restaurant. Mm -hmm. the, the margins are, are uh, thin. And, yeah. You know, uh, how do you price things? How do you cost things? The marketing, you know, the, there are so many facets of it. And, but we have people uh, that can uh, help that... Uh, that business owner uh, or that uh, aspiring entrepreneur to you know really figure out whether it is something that they should be doing you know mm -hmm. workshops on on is entrepreneurship the, the right thing that you should be looking at and, yeah you know and often with uh, people we we try to make sure that they have some industry experience or if you don't have the direct industry experience that you have someone uh, uh, that is going to work for you that knows how to run the business mm -hmm. yeah. so what about franchises we do a lot of franchises, yeah. uh, and uh, you know a lot of successful uh, entrepreneurs. You know they get SBA loans, uh, you know, to to buy a franchise, yeah. and, and that's something that's possible. Now, what do you what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know if this is uh, something the SBA addresses, but wouldn't the SBA like that because it's a proven system and it's still a small business? It's like a it's like a privately owned business. It, it can be, you yeah. know, so uh, different franchises have, you know, higher uh, success and, and failure rates. So uh, doing your homework, uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, uh, what markets uh, different franchises have done well in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, th there are some franchises that uh, have not been uh, as uh, successful as people had, had hoped when they got into it. And Frozen yogurt. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so you, you need to do your homework. and. Yeah. and so what I uh, suggest to uh, you know people that are coming to me and they want to launch a business or to buy a franchise is that they should meet with our SCORE network, our small business development centers, and our women's centers. You know, you meet with different people in those organizations and try to build a consensus. If you're going to be risking a lot of money and often, you know, putting up your house as additional collateral in order to get that business off the off the ground. You want to make sure that uh, your concept is good, uh, that uh, you've dotted all the I's and, and crossed the T's. Mm -hmm. So just, um, I don't know if you can answer this, but what would you say one of the biggest mistakes a up and coming or a small business makes at the beginning? I've, I've seen it all. Uh, you know, uh, early on in my career, uh, you know, I did uh, workouts and liquidations for the SBA. So I've, I've seen a lot of mistakes uh, on the part of people. But, you know, sometimes life happens, you know, uh, you know, this sickness, uh, sure. you know, a yeah. death, uh, yeah. you know, uh, partnership disputes, oh, you yeah. know, uh, making sure that you know your partner and that you are a right fit. Uh, you know, partnership d uh, disputes can destroy a business pretty quickly. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, having basic business knowledge, uh, you know, knowing the numbers a little bit, uh, you know, you don't have to be an accountant, but, uh, you know, understanding, uh, you know, uh, how, what the numbers mean and what you need to do in order to try to change the numbers so that you can be profitable or uh, right. in, improve your margins, you know, really 
really important. So you want to know what your product costs, what you can sell it for, <laughs> how much your rent is, yeah. and how much your electricity is. Oh, I forgot about insurance. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, and we have people that will review those business plans yeah. and uh, uh, help you with the cash flows, help you to get bank ready when you're mm -hmm. approaching the bank uh, so that you can hopefully get the bank to say yes. All right, I got a question. I got two yeah. questions. First one is, um, let's say I, uh, I had a person I was going to go into partnership with. We want to open a donut shop or something, mm -hmm. you know. Um, do you have the, uh, can I come to you and say, I need some legal advice here. I need someone to help draw up a contract. Can you help with that too? We don't do that. So uh, we, we don't have lawyers on staff that, that do small business. Can work. you direct someone to it or you can, can you tell someone the steps to go through that? So where we have to be really careful is uh, the perception that we're endorsing one over another. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I can't just say, hey, go see this attorney and, uh, you know, uh, they're getting all the work. But I, I, I do know of resources that will help small businesses with pro bono work mm -hmm. and you know, so we can certainly connect uh, people uh, who need that help and, mm -hmm. and are looking for resources. Uh, the SCORE Network and the Small Business Development Centers, uh, they have a little bit more uh, flexibility than I do as a, as a government agency, but, yeah. but we all have to be careful of the perceptions of, uh, about directing uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, people to any just... Because you could direct a lot to somebody if you want. Yeah. It, and it, yeah. the same goes with banks. You yeah. know, I, I can't say, hey, uh, go to this bank, go to this yeah. bank. You know, so uh, one of the, the new things that we've recently launched, which is really successful and it, and it's bringing SBA uh, into the, the current times, is we have an online matching program for small businesses that don't know where to go to look for capital. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's called Lender Match. And if they go onto the SBA website, uh, click on Lender Match, they answer 20 basic questions. You know, the age of the business, the type of business, uh, how much money they need, what's the money for, uh, you, you, you catch the drift. And mm -hmm. then uh, those answers go out to our lenders who are registered in Lender Match. And, and if they're interested, they opt in and it trades the contact information between the entrepreneur and the lender. And uh, they uh, get into hopefully a real application and a loan. And mm -hmm. it's connecting a lot of uh, small businesses with sources of capital uh, that otherwise wouldn't have happened. Right. So it's really cool. Now, does it cost anything to use the SBA? Do you have to pay a membership? Is there something uh, the, that goes along with it? The SBA is a federal agency. It's not a membership organization. So uh, anyone is eligible to come and talk to us and, and to take advantage of the resources. Uh, um, you know, th through the SCORE Network and the Small Business Development Center, uh, those mentorship appointments and, and business advisory, uh, they're all free of charge, they're all confidential. Uh, uh, the SCORE organization there, uh, it's a volunteer organization, uh, and we have a, a tremendous uh, passionate uh, cadre of, of folks working there. But through the Small Business Development Centers, they're paid full-time staff, but mm -hmm. you can meet with them as many hours uh, over and over again. And as often what happens is you build a relationship. And so it might be uh, you're going to them for startup questions, but then a couple of years down the road, you know, uh, maybe some competition moved in and you're mm -hmm. trying to figure out uh, what you should be doing in order to try to, uh, you know, uh, compete yeah. more effectively. So you go back to the uh, Small Business Development Center, get some new advice uh, for new challenges. And, and it, it often it's, uh, you know, real strong relationships that go on for years. Wow, that's excellent. And it's all free. It doesn't yeah. cost any money. That's fantastic. I had no idea this existed. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I had an idea right. like, oh, it exists because yeah. you see things. People are like, oh, you can get a grant. You know, oh, you right. can do this. How? You know, I don't right. know how to do all that. Right. But to know that this exists is really... Um, I don't know, it, as a business owner and as, a, as an entrepreneur, it's very reassuring to know that you can go to uh, this uh, SBA, the Small Business Administration, and get all this support. And not only that, it's like, hey, this is your tax dollars. You right. pay for all this stuff, you know, right? When, right. I, when I send my checks to the government and everything for my taxes, these are the things you can get in return. Absolutely, but one thing um, which is really important, so our, our loan programs, yeah. it, it operates under a zero subsidy. Uh, so there's no cost to the taxpayer. Yeah. So uh, to get an SBA loan, uh, normally there is a fee that mm -hmm. is charged. It's mm -hmm. like points on a mortgage. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's what pays for the SBA loan programs. Yeah. 
Uh, but right now, we have fee incentives in place where uh, there are no fees that are charged for loans, 125000 or less. Mm -hmm. And there are fee incentives for veterans, National Guard, and re reservists on yeah. loans, 350000 or less. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, as far as the a overall agency, uh, you know, our, our budget is solid. We're being treated very well. Um, yes. And, but, uh, you know, with the loan programs, but we also do venture capital. Uh, so we've only touched on some of the things that we do. We, we do a lot of different things. So when you think of uh, our uh, VC programs, uh, small business investment companies, those are, are at zero subsidy also. Wow, it just sounds even better. The more you talk, the better it sounds. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, and so helping uh, businesses to get into exporting, uh, you know, so we have a, a big exporting event coming yeah. up. Uh, Where's that going to be? Uh, that's going to be in Boston. It's with the uh, Massachusetts Export Center. Uh, but if they go on to the Massachusetts SBA site, so mm -hmm. sba.gov slash MA, they'll find an event calendar. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, sign up for the e-updates so that you'll uh, get these things in your email box as far yeah. as these events that are happening. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll have about 200 manufacturers uh, for this event. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, and and uh, these are really good businesses, uh, but they are uh, uh, looking to export or to expand exporting. Uh, you mentioned grants. Uh, so there aren't grant uh, to, you know, people, there's a lot of bad information out on the website. You, you think that you can get a grant uh, to start a hair salon. Or, yeah, right, you know, exactly. It, yeah. Th that's, that's not available. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there are uh, some grants right now to help businesses. Uh, it's through the STEP grant program, uh, which stands for st uh, State Trade Export Promotion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, small businesses can get up to $12,000 in uh, free grant money if they're going to uh, increase or expand exporting. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can use that money for a trade show, for uh, translation, for marketing. So when you say exporting, is that like taking a product and sending it to India, sending it to another country? Like, w w what what would exporting fall under? Uh, yeah, so that's a good example of exporting. And uh, so a lot of people think that you have to be big to be an exporter. And uh, so an example I'll give you is uh, a business out in Pittsfield called Yummy Treasures. And what they do is beads, and they mm -hmm. make jewelry. And so yeah. it's, it's like a crafting business. And, and they're actually the number one seller on Etsy. And they uh, export. They, yeah. s they ship a lot of their beads to Japan. Mm -hmm. and, and so you don't think of a, and th this business started at the kitchen table, uh, yeah. but uh, with the help of the SBA, they were able to get into uh, brick and mortar space. So they have a warehouse uh, that they do all their shipping mm -hmm. across the U.S. and uh, international, but they have a retail uh, store in front. But like this is the power of the SBA program where they worked with the Small Business Development Center, got technical assistance and, and guidance along the way, and, and they just continue to grow and yeah. expand. But they export. And, and, but another example of exporting, it, it can be services. So it doesn't have to be a product, mm -hmm. uh, but it can also be um, a component that goes into another product that is eventually exported. Yeah, and so uh, you're oh, really? just okay. you're just doing uh, something that yeah. is going to be part of the the bigger uh, thing that is going to get shipped. That is an exporter. We have uh, programs uh, to help the banks to lend to exporters, where we give them a higher guarantee. We give them a ninety percent guarantee. Mm -hmm. So you make the widget that goes in the big widget that gets shipped away, yeah. you're yeah. an exporter. And we, and we call that a, goes into it. <laughs> goes into it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that's a nice technical term that goes <laughs> into it. it, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we're getting near the end of the interview. Is there anything uh, you wanna share uh, that would be good for the public to know that we didn't touch on yet? Just a lot of work right now uh, with the new administration and uh, with SBA, uh, rebranding the SBA. And uh, so a lot of people working on new goals and initiatives uh, make SBA even more effective and efficient, uh, streamlining our programs. Uh, so I think the small business community, they're going to be pleased with some of the things that they'll be seeing uh, rolled out in the next uh, couple months. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's all about... Uh, 
growing jobs. And so, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we've received uh, new goals. The, those came out last week. We know that uh, we're going to be uh, tasked with uh, growing jobs, and that is the main focus. Mm -hmm. uh, and so one of the other things, when you look at the subcategory that is working with businesses in underserved markets, working with businesses in rural communities, uh, and, but it's all about the job creation and trying to strengthen the economy. Yeah, excellent. That's what, uh, that's the little part of America we don't hear about. This was great information today. Uh, really, you know, like I am, I am so like uh, pumped up by it, to be honest with you, because I'm a, I'm a small business owner myself. And to know that this kind of stuff exists, is, uh, it's really inspirational. So I want to thank you for being the guest today. Yeah, connect with us through those e-updates and uh, look forward to helping you. You know, it would be nice if I could get maybe a, a, a government contract for paintless dent repair if it's out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. The government owns a lot of cars. They do, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, like you said, they're the largest uh, purchaser of all products, right? You got it. So I'll have to look into that. Okay. All right, Bob. Good. Thank you. All right, I want to thank you for watching NORCAM and a uh, episode slash NORCAM Matt Lagore show about the SBA, the Small Business, Business Administration, the U.S. government wants to help you more than you realize. All right. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.